because there's a lot more younger people now facing it and accepting it and their parents are helping and supporting them through that. But it must be, I mean, you've almost got to wait for people to catch up because for, for you, and you've been living with this, I mean, both of you have said, and interestingly, whenever we've uh, interviewed anybody that's transgender, you, they always said the same thing. They have known from a very, very early age. It's not something that just suddenly happens. It's something that you've lived with since being little. I think you said you were four when you yeah. first realised. Well, I actually, I think you were actually born with it. Yeah. I mean, there is a theory now which um, medical professional brought out. It happens in the womb between 8 to 13 weeks. Um, sort of the hormones miss each other with it and you're born with it, where people thought it was a condition of the mind before it's actually a, a condition you're actually born with well you you were 17 weren't you and you you wanted to transition as a teenager but didn't feel able or that you'd be accepted yeah right? i lived i lived for 18 months in a female role when i was about 18. did you yeah but i had no one to talk to i had no one to go to doctors didn't know anything about it at the time and i just I was terrified, so I just yeah. withdrew back into my old world. But isn't it better the more we talk about it, the more, as you say, it becomes mundane and ordinary? Yeah, well, I, I wanted to talk, talk about it until we're literally sick to death of it. <laughs> and I think, I think we're getting there, actually, because yeah. it used to be, you know, you'd be on the cover of a newspaper just, just for being trans, whereas now they seem to be looking for more extreme examples. So you get the, the pregnant man or the yeah. transgender kids or, you know, that there has to be something or, or two transgender people dating, something mm -hmm. like that. So I think it's just a process that we've got to go through. I think, you know, w where we're at now, I don't know if you'd agree, is, is probably where we were at with, with gay people yeah. 20 years yes, ago yes. you just had people coming out left right and center Same, didn't yeah. you because they felt safe and i think it's interesting actually that in the past year um, caroline cossie who was the bond girl in the 80s beautiful absolutely beautiful transgender woman and she was treated abominably um mm. in in the press she was she was ridiculed by interviews i mean they would literally you know laugh, laugh in her face and she went into hiding for about 20 years and i think she's kind of looked at the way things are now and thought do you know what this is a this is a brave new world that we're in. Eddie Raymond hasn't mm. gone through that change him, himself, and so there have been so quite quite a lot of, uh, of negative comments already before the movie even has come out. You're going to get criticised for the fact that you you're playing a transgender woman and you're not trans. Of course, he said, well, you know, I've just played uh, Stephen, Stephen Hawking. Hawking. You know, I'm not a man in my fifties with motor neuron disease, mm. and I I kind of get where that where where, where that comes from, but I guess. He had Stephen's blessing with that, and I'm not sure if if there are any transgender women out there who'd want to be played by a man in in a film. So I think, well, I think we, we, were, we all were meant to start with. So I don't see the harm in him playing that role. Mm. I think it will educate people even more. The and trouble is also if you he's a he's a uh, Oscar winner. He's a yeah. massive Hollywood name. Yeah, uh, and to get that movie worldwide. It's very important that you have the right person play it. They could have picked a transgender actor, but no one would know, and maybe the film would just bomb at the box office. With him, we've got a chance that it will, will make it. 